Hi, hello, vanakkam. I am Manoj. Welcome to my channel SMK Vlogs Canada. In this video, I am just going to share my experience as a dentist migrating from India to Canada. I am also going to share my uh, examination experiences with you and how I got my first job here in Canada. I did my undergraduation uh, in Chennai and went on to complete my post-graduation in prosthodontics and implantology uh, from Bangalore. After I finished my post-graduation, uh, I moved back to Chennai. I started working as a specialist consultant prosthodontist and I worked for about uh, six years. During that time, I wanted to explore how dentistry works uh, in Canada. And uh, it was during that time I started my application process as well. Uh, it was in 2017 uh, when I uh, submitted my basic credentials to uh, National Dental Examination Board of Canada. So uh, that's the website which I used and I, I think it's still the same website where anybody has to submit their documents to get it approved. I got my approval like in some eight months time and once my documentation was approved, I was eligible to get my uh, uh, part one examination. So the examination process which I underwent had four parts of exams. Part one was called as uh, AFK, which is Assessment of Fundamental Knowledge. And uh, when I was giving it in the year 2018, it had 300 MCQs and uh, uh, it had both clinical subjects and a little bit of basic science involved in it. And uh, I went ahead and uh, cleared that exam. And once I finished that, uh, the second part of exam was ACJ, it's assessment of uh, clinical judgment. It's, it's a multiple uh, choice question uh, exam, uh, which is based on clinical scenarios. So you get to do a lot of uh, uh, clinical based uh, questions. And that was my part two of examination. After clearing ACJ, I went on to go ahead with the third part of examination, which is ACS, which is assessment of clinical skills. Uh, of course, there has been a lot of changes in the examination patterns uh, over the past uh, few years. So uh, if at all, if there has been changes, you can go to the website to know what is the exact uh, process right now. I'm just sharing my experience and at that point in time from 2018 to 2020. So <clears throat> once I finished my clinical uh, skills exams, uh, then I just have like one step further, which is the uh, written and OSCE, which is the final uh, licensure exam. Once that licensure exam uh, was completed, uh, we then have to go ahead and I have to, I, I had to register myself in one of the provinces. Uh, but in order for you to get the license in any province, you need to have a, a permanent residence uh, status. Now, uh, coming to my experiences with each part of this examination, I basically prepared my examinations uh, from India. So I didn't move to Canada first uh, and then start my examination process. Instead, I wanted to explore and see how things are going. If in case, if it is difficult to clear the exam, I was not even planning to move to Canada. So I started with the examination process. I read books like uh, National Dental Examination Board's question banks. I read like, uh, I, I did, I saw like four years of uh, question bank series, which was available from the website. Uh, after that, I also did the uh, ND, NBDE test packets. These test packets are basically for US based exams, but the content is going to be the same and I use the same study materials uh, to test my knowledge on this. Uh, I finished all those subjects there. Of course, I did go through and read all the uh, uh, standard textbooks that are to be read uh, for each subjects. Uh, of course, I didn't concentrate much on basic science because the weightage on the basic science subjects was not that high. Uh, but of course, uh, pharmacology is one subject which uh, we had to do a lot and I did uh, explore and read more uh, uh, of pharmacology for the basic science part. Uh, once I finished all those, I did uh, uh, 
test myself with again US based uh, MCQs which is national NBDE test packets and I tested myself uh, because I didn't formally join any coaching centers for uh, NDEB so I had to test myself um, I, I used to take up those question papers and I, I never used to look at those answer sheets and I used to solve those MCQs and then go back and see the reference materials and then look into the uh, MCQ key, keys and if at all I'm, I'm getting around 75 to 80 percent of those answers then I was a little bit confident that uh, it should be easier for me to clear the exam. So uh, I tested myself a lot it took approximately about uh, six to eight months for me to prepare for all these uh, uh, subjects and uh, make myself confident and be ready to give these exams. Uh, one main reason why I didn't want to uh, uh, move to Canada and start preparing these exams was uh, there is this peer pressure because people who move here, uh, of course the examination is a tough process but when you have that peer pressure when your peers are telling that this is tough and the exam is very tasking and stuff uh, I get uh, demotivated so that was the main reason why I didn't want to uh, join any uh, course and get in connection with any of the peers just to uh, uh, remove that peer pressure so I, I like to study by myself, explore by myself and test my knowledge by myself uh, with all these question papers. Uh, of course the subject and, uh, and science is going to be the same wherever you go, you're, whether you're practicing in India, you're practicing in UK or Canada, science is the same. So that's, that was my only gut feeling and that drove me here and uh, I was lucky enough to clear my part one of examination on the first go. Moving on to uh, my experience with part two of exam which was ACJ. Assessment of clinical judgment this was uh, considered as one of the toughest exams in the entire uh, examination uh, process. I felt that too. Uh, even though I did my masters in prosthodontics I had a lot of interdisciplinary approach in treating patients because I had this background experience for about six years working in uh, India as a prosthodontist. All this was a little bit beneficial in understanding the uh, questions and how the pattern works. Uh, but still the, the key in uh, ACJ uh, or the difficult part which I had or I experienced in part two was these questions will be given with 10 or 15 choices and uh, there's going to be multiple choices which are correct answers and this pattern had negative, negative marking unlike part one. Part one didn't have any negative marking. So this is a little bit tricky and I, I, I didn't know how to go about. So I, <clears throat> I took the help from one of my junior. He's a very good friend of mine. He's practicing in Vancouver, uh, Canada. And he suggested me like, uh, why don't you go about uh, this examination process in such a way that you mark the limited number of choices which you feel 100% sure that they are the answers. Even if you are in doubt, if you think like whether it's going to be the answer, I'm thinking like 50-50, just don't mark the answer. So ACJ has those type of questions. And, and with regards to the books which I read for ACJ, you don't have to go back and read the same textbooks, whatever you did for your AFK. Instead, I, I collected a lot of books from uh, Facebook and uh, online study materials where they're all clinical judgment based books. Uh, one very good book which I read was Odell's uh, clinical uh, uh, judgment book which is fantastic and it, it gives it covers about 25 cases all of different speciality and then with regards to radiology I did Langley's uh, exercises. It's an amazing book which gives you uh, fantastic insights about how different radiographs can be interpreted where cavities are present, where do you notice and what type of lesions you notice on those pan and uh, PAs. So that is one other book which I did for my ACJ 
and and with regards to the other clinical subjects like prosthodontics uh, i did uh, collect three different books one for removal prosthodontics one for fixed prosthodontics and uh, 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 one for implant dentistry as well all these had clinical scenario based uh, uh, books and and these are just like adding to your knowledge from your existing curriculum so even though they are not like standard books for these examinations this is just for you to test yourself and just to know like how how these questions can be handled and after doing that i i wanted to test myself with this examination process right like before giving my uh, exam for part 2 i i wanted to be double sure like uh, how this examination works because i had no clue i didn't join any coaching and and i was literally in space i didn't know how to go about with this then uh, uh what i did was i i did find an online portal which which were giving online mock exams at that point in time this was back in 2019 uh but nowadays uh i'm not sure whether they still have uh those online mock exams uh but then i had the opportunity to take up that online mock exam i tested myself and and to be surprised i failed that examination uh <laughs> but of course it was it was making me feel a little jittery about taking the examination because at that time i had already booked my examination dates and i was planning to travel from india to canada to give that exam uh i was a little skeptical i gave the exam and i just passed that examination uh so yes uh, this examination was the most difficult part which i experienced because part 3 which is the assessment of clinical skills is more of handwork and since i did my majors in prosthodontics i was a little bit confident about that even though the examination process at that time was like consisting of two full days uh, i was a little bit confident of giving that and clearing that exam rather than acj acj was my uh, toughest examination my next experience is with uh, part 3 which is acs assessment of clinical skills uh yes this examination is also very difficult because it's it's going to mentally tax you it's going to be two full days of examinations uh of course right now the pattern has been changed but at that point in time in 2019 when i was giving my uh part 3 assessment of clinical skills it had all typhoidon based uh, examinations like preparing class 2 cavities preparing uh, a crown preps uh, giving temporary crowns placing rubber dams doing access openings on endodontically treated tooth doing amalgam restorations and composite restorations uh, which is again more of bread and butter dentistry and since i had the experience for about 6 years i was a little bit confident in uh, performing those exercises but the the main key point which uh, i had to take home was i didn't have any resources back in india uh because people who are migrating to canada they have this facility to go to coaching centers and and take up courses for part 3 as well but for part 3 when i was in india working at that time i again went back to my friend and my friend suggested like look i he he joined practice at that time and he was selling all his practice materials so you basically have to practice on model teeth and uh, i had to set up my own mini uh, dental uh, office inside my house in one room with all the compressors and everything and uh, i i purchased all the uh, compressors from india all the instruments materials from india and i i i started practicing at home uh, the key here is how did i judge myself so i was being very skeptical and i normally like to uh, blame myself with all my work i try to find mistakes in all my work so whatever work i document i try to find the mistakes and so that i can learn one step at a time so that's how i took up this challenge of acs as well because uh people uh who were giving exams here they were saying like this examination is really the hardest uh but to me i felt this exam was relatively easier and part 2 was the toughest for me and uh with this examination uh, uh practice 
all I used to do was finish work, go back home, just do one or two cavity preps on those typhodont models. Uh, I used to, uh, ACS have, I mean, in, in the NDEB website portal, they, uh, they had given like a clear cut uh, uh, marking rules like how to grade yourself and if in case you lip the adjacent tooth, which grade you fall into, if your cavity depth is more than four millimeters or three millimeters or two millimeters, how you grade yourself. And that's how I graded critically myself, my work. And uh, of course, nobody is a better judge than yourself. If you feel that uh, uh, you are confident with that work, you'll be successful. That's how I took up my uh, process for ACS. I assessed myself with all the uh, materials. I bought everything from India. Uh, I, I, I practiced a lot of exercises there. I practiced literally for about four months. Uh, and then I gave my exams. I, moved, I gave this exam in Vancouver. I went there, uh, finished the two days of exams. And after the second day, I was pretty drained out because the examination process is so lengthy. It starts from 9 a.m. in the morning and it, it finishes at 5 p.m. And it's for two consecutive days and I had to perform 12 exercises for that exam. So <clears throat> at the end of second day, I, I, I literally didn't know whether I performed well or uh, whether I was mediocre. I was not sure. I was, I was hoping that I, I would clear the exam. I went back home and then four to six weeks later, I was surprised and I was happy I cleared the examination. And then the last step which was left out was written and OSCE exam. That examination is relatively very simple. It's, it's a combination of part one and part two. So uh, you had to take that and uh, I registered for that examination. And all you had to do for, was just go over some of the old uh, question banks again to give part a written part of part four. And the OSCE is basically uh, the same as ACJ, but more of a simpler variation of that. It's not going to be that difficult. And I went ahead and completed my written and OSCE. And there you go. That's how I completed my entire licensing sequence for uh, Canadian board. Now I finished all the four examination process, but how was my sequence? Because you need a permanent resident status in order for you to license yourself and get a license here in Canada and one of the provinces and then start working. Because in order for you to get the license, you need either a PR status or a citizenship status. And of course I didn't have that. So when I cleared my part one, that time itself, I applied uh, for my PR with my family. Uh, my brother is here, so uh, I had a basic visa, multiple entry visa at that time. So with that, I was just traveling back and forth and giving my examinations. Until then, uh, I was not having my PR. But uh, after I cleared my part one, I applied. And that is through IRCC website and that is totally a separate topic of discussion for Immigration Canada and Control. Uh, I got my PR and once I got my PR, we then moved here and then uh, <clears throat> there were few language requirements for licenses in certain provinces. I am I'm working in Ontario and in Ontario, they did require uh, a dentist to get their uh, IELTS uh, cleared and that was an academic and I did my IELTS academic after I finished my fourth part of exam and, and, and with the IELTS results and the NDEB certification, I applied to uh, Ontario board. Uh, with regards to Vancouver, especially in British Columbia, British Columbia board didn't require uh, language requirements back then in 2020. Uh, but of course, uh, Ontario is where uh, my brother is and I wanted to be closer with my family and everyone. So that's how I ended up deciding Ontario and I gave my English requirement examinations. I cleared that and then was the next step, finding a job as a dentist in Canada. The next step in this journey was like finding a job. Um, there are, there are many websites. Uh, I moved here and then I was clueless as to how to apply, how to write my resume and uh, how to publish it and how to get 
a good job opportunity because I literally didn't know many people here in Canada as dentists. I just had a couple of friends and through those friends, I did get one offer uh, uh, in, in, in Canada. And here, the practice style is totally different. Uh, uh, back in India, I was working in just one office as a specialist all throughout the week. But here in Canada, uh, the practice style was different. And, and I got to know that people take you in multiple offices as part time. Like you can work in one office for two days and then you can work in another office for two more days and you can take up as many days as you want. So uh, uh, that's how uh, I was told. And that was something new to me and I didn't know how to take it up. So when my friend suggested this uh, particular office, I went in to see the owner of that office and uh, they were impressed with my work and, and uh, they do something called as work interview and I had to give a work interview and uh, for them to approve me and get a job. And uh, once they were satisfied, they recruited me, I started working and, and that office, I just worked two days a week. Uh, will that be sufficient enough to earn and get enough money to survive and sustain your family? I, that is difficult because two days is like part-time job. So then I again started exploring like getting more days, finding out other offices. Getting a job was not that easy at that time because it was during pandemic time. And uh, after I researched, I just uh, opened an account with Indeed. And in Indeed, uh, Indeed.ca, uh, that's where I saw a lot of job opportunities coming up, main postings, and then I submitted all my entire resume. Uh, and, and in fact, I also created my own blog, uh, which had all the cases that I had performed back in India because I love to document my cases and uh, I had written detailed explanation about each case. So that acted as a benefit in my resume because people who were asking who were looking for uh, associate dentists, uh, I was happy to share my blog to them and they were able to go through the cases what I have done and, and, and they were pretty confident in hiring me and that's how I got my second job. So uh, <clears throat> created, I created my blog and that was definitely uh, useful. Once I got into my second job, I just stayed there in the second office as well. And, and there I worked for another two more days. So basically I started working four days and then slowly added one more day working like five days a week, which was uh, more than enough and I was uh, happy. And so that's about my journey. Uh, if this video was useful to you, if you were able to get some insights out of it, uh, please leave a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to my channel and support this channel. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.